Hello, you're listening to Send in the Experts with Georgina Durant. This podcast is all about teaching and supporting children and young people with special educational needs and disabilities, SEND. My name is Georgina Durant. I'm the host of this podcast brought to you by Twinkle SEND. As a former teacher and Senko myself, I wanted to create a platform to share some of the amazing things that my guests are doing to support learners with SEND. So whether you're listening on your commute, tuning in whilst walking your dog or curled up on the sofa with a nice cup of coffee, thank you so much for joining us. In this episode, I am ridiculously excited to be joined by Lizzie Acker. Lizzie Acker is most well known for being an extremely popular contestant on Channel 4's Great British Bake Off in 2021. She is an amateur baker from Liverpool with a huge personality who proved she has the talent and consistency by reaching the quarterfinals. She's very open about having ADHD, dyslexia and dyspraxia and keen to work to raise awareness of the conditions. Lizzie continues her baking journey and showcases her talent through demonstrations, television, social media, and digital campaigns. Hi, Lizzie. Hi. I imagine everyone says this, but I am genuinely a huge fan of Bake Off, and I've been so excited to speak to you. Um, We watch Bake Off as a family, so what I do is we watch it on Catch Up the next day with the kids after school, and we all pick like a (laughs) favourite. They, we all sit around and we decide who we think and we have to do it in the first five minutes who's gonna be our favorite and then we see if somebody picks the winning one and I actually picked you so my kids are thinking I am like I've got major street cred from speaking to you now <laughs> oh I'm glad I didn't win for you then Gotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you should have won for me that would have been good I could have actually won the challenge <laughs> Me and my family do the same. We watch it and then off the first episodes, you've got to pick the winner, but we put money behind it. So there's always <gasps> a good jackpot at the end. Oh, maybe um, when the kids are a bit older, we might put money behind it then. Yeah, that would be it's good. It's great. <laughs> I think we've done it with like cake, like the winner gets some cake, but I don't think anyone's actually picked the winning person. And they tend to be a bit sneaky to my kids and like change halfway through who they're going to support. <laughs> oh, we get profit into it. Write it down. Um, the year before I was on it, five people picked peter really yeah it was so strange wow. um because we were like how, how did they all know it, yeah yeah he was how just gonna you know from just from your first instinct yeah because we have to do it before the even i think we do it after the intro so you know the bit where they go and say who everybody is we do it after oh, yeah. that so you really don't know very much about that person <laughs> and what they're going to be like oh, <laughs> so fake off if we could talk about that first and i'll try and rein in my excitement and caffeine um, so were you a fan of Bake Off before then? Were you yeah, into it? so I've loved Bake Off for years. Um, watch it every year with my family. Obviously, it's this massive competition. Um, yeah. I absolutely love everything about it. But wasn't, you know, like, um, like never used to do, like, pizza. So, some people do bake-alongs, don't they? And bake along yeah. with it. I've never done that. I've just admired it and obviously loved some of the bakers followed them for ages um and i'm a massive bake off fan girl like so when i have met bakers i'm like oh my god (laughs) that makes me feel better that i've been a bit like that with you (laughs) oh i'm like that with everyone like um, i'm doing a few food festivals in the summer and uh, benjamina is going to be there and i love benjamina and every all the bakers from this year are like you've got to act cool don't just fangirl her. You're going to look weird. And I'm like, I'm going to get there, see her, and probably scream or cry. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a cuddle. And... <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, so how what do, how do you apply for Bake Off then? What's the actual process? Is it How does it go? How did you go about applying? Were, were you certain from watching it that you were thinking, right, I'm going to apply? Or did it happen by accident? What happened? Um, no, so it, it was lockdown, wasn't it? So yeah. we're in lockdown. Um Bake Off had been on, it got so much attention because everyone was trapped. Um, yeah. And one of my friends is a pastry chef. And oh, he wow. was like, you you should apply this year. And I was like, as if. Because I'd only really started picking up loads of bacon again during lockdown. Um, oh, wow. And I was just like, yeah, whatevs. And he was like, no, no, you've got to. And then the day before the applications had to be sent off, he texted me and he was like, have you applied? And I was like, no I was like I did fill it out I just haven't sent it and he was like if you don't send it I am gonna apply for you <laughs> brilliant so I was like fine I'll send it sent it didn't expect anything back because I didn't get anyone to check the words nothing it's like the first form I've ever filled out and yeah. didn't get anyone to check because I thought nothing of it um 
and then suddenly got a call back no um, way. and was just like what is going on like this is what? So Crazy. how long how long after you sent the application did you get the phone call then? Was it out of the blue? Did, had you forgotten about it and then you just got a phone call or was it quite soon? Yeah, so I, I was in work and then it, this unknown number started ringing me. <laughs> I wouldn't I have thinking, answered. I'd have been like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't. I got So the, it went to voicemail, so I've still got the voicemail now, which like, oh. is lovely. Um, yeah, and it was like, oh, this is blah de blah from Bake Off. Could you give us a ring back? And I was like, I just went into shock mode and like got out, got out to one of the cars and was like to the lads, Bake Off's just rang me. I've got to no go. <laughs> and I just <laughs> went for a little walk. I was just like in this complete little world by myself, like, what's going on? That's amazing. Brilliant. It was crazy. And then after, so after that, is that, so do you have like a process after that of like them whittling down who they want? How does it work? Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of rounds within the audition process. You could, no one could go into too much detail because I think they basically keep it pretty much the same every year. Um, yeah, so you could help someone give them... out too much, yeah. Yeah, so there's like Proper six rounds and they're all like um, all different, but obviously because we were in the middle of lockdowns and stuff, a lot of ours were done over computer um, oh, wow. and stuff yeah. like that. Loads of, you know, like <laughs> Zoom meetings. You'd, you'd finish one Zoom meeting and then be like, oh, you've just got to do this one and then it was endless and so bizarre it it was the weirdest thing ever but it did not keep me and my family going absolutely what a thing to do in lockdown as well yeah yeah it was the only new thing that was happening so um every time i get through like and they'd say oh here's another um like vid zoom call to do we'd have a celebration and we'd be like (laughs) (laughs) so i love it i didn't expect anything from it i was just happy that i got as far as i did um because i know some people apply so many years on the run and stuff yeah oh that's brilliant oh it couldn't have come a better time almost for you all then because it would be yeah something to think about something different to distract you all during lockdown that's brilliant it did Um, and then when you actually when you were doing it then were you because your family wouldn't have been able to come with you would they you know how in previous years the family have been able to go along and you'd be able to go home and stuff were you you in a bubble yeah so um, we filmed in in a covid bubble so all my family had to isolate the week before I went and yeah. I had to isolate. Um, and then when we got down there, we had to COVID tests and all that. Um, there was a point where I was going to take Prue the dog with me. Um, I've seen your dog. I actually follow <laughs> her on social media now. <laughs> when, I was so- doing my, when I was doing my research on you, I was like, oh, she's got a dog. Oh, look at her dog. And then I was like, I've got to follow her on Instagram. So if anyone's listening who um, likes, what is she, a bed, what is she, a bed, like, Bedlington Terrier. Bedlington Terrier. <laughs> You've got to follow Prud- Prudence on um, Instagram because she's adorable, isn't she? Yeah, and she's just the biggest, um, you know, like um, stress relief that I've got. Yeah, like walking her and talking to her and stuff like that. So there was one point where I was thinking, like, am I actually going to be able to? Because I really don't cope well with change. Yeah. Um. So I was thinking, am I going to be able to like adjust fast enough and stuff? Should I take her? And then in the end, I was too worried because she is very particular. Um, that they weren't <laughs> going to look after it to the to her standards. Her standards. She, she only drinks out of um, porcelain like porcelain or like bowls <laughs> and you've got to say to her prue water prue water oh otherwise she's not gonna drink so oh, it's like a proper princess <laughs> yeah i was thinking they're gonna be like jog on me <laughs> <laughs> you're bringing your celebrity dog with you but <laughs> yeah. only drinks out of porcelain cups when she's instructed to yeah <laughs> she's already oh. an instagrammer she doesn't need beef off <laughs> no no <laughs> bless her that's so funny I completely, she's got loads of followers as well hasn't she oh no it was so weird so she, only, she before Bake Off she did have like 3,000 I think yeah um, because I used to go to all like these mad little it, the dog world is such a weird little niche world <laughs> and I used to go out and like meet all these like dog Instagrammers and stuff of Liverpool <laughs> honestly no it's way. so strange so and, um, and then someone seen her like on Bake Off I think they, they had her up for two minutes and then people found out she had an Instagram and then she just got flooded and I hadn't been on the Instagram since like the start of lockdown one and was like oh wow I'm gonna have to post some stuff yeah need to put some pictures of her now yeah yeah but she's had she's had some PR boxes and everything 
no way yeah oh she is she loves it she was she was made for the life <laughs> born to be famous so. yeah <laughs> so she was left behind then and then you so you, who did you leave her with um so she stayed i currently live at the back of my mum dad's house oh cool so she just stayed at, stay there, yeah, yeah they looked after her um oh, nice. yeah so then i went down and um i think we you had to commit to six weeks right i think that's how long it took to film everything but obviously if you got knocked out you'd go home the next day oh gosh um, oh gosh you're only one day because <laughs> you're yeah. actually there for like a week because it's a week when we're watching it but yeah a day that's yeah. harsh <laughs> so we, we filmed we had a couple of days at the start with no filming you know to do you know like them then photos of the flower and uh, yeah. all that get used to the practice tent and um everything like that and then um we filmed two days on two days off so it was yeah. really intense, intense. Yeah, it's um, that's why I definitely had that little weird breakdown week two, and yeah. Matt was like, "What did you do?" And I was like, "Watch Harry Potter." And everyone was like, "If she's not serious about bacon, she shouldn't be there." And I was like, "You need to oh, chill no. out." <laughs> oh, so is that like keyboard warriors? <laughs> oh yeah, things like on that. Twitter. Oh, that's harsh. And I think oh. I was just like, at that point, did because I'd, I'd obviously like would I'm quite obviously got sen issues and that's what i found hilarious about come like say talking about them and we hate i talked about them before when yeah. i you know was counting biscuits and stuff and they obviously chose not to put in in the uh, edit yeah. um but the amount of people who messaged me was like watched it for about 10 minutes and knew you had sen issues and mm-hmm. <laughs> i was like all right <laughs> Could have done with Come you like the then. start of school when you like needed a diagnosis early. <laughs> they can spot it yeah. that easily, but school would miss it. <laughs> Everyone's been on TikTok now for two years. They can diagnose you with yeah. anything. <laughs> Absolutely. All the experts. <laughs> oh dear. So what was your favourite bit then? What what was the best bit for you of Bake Off? What did you enjoy the most? Um, what that- I enjoyed the most was probably not the filming. Um, it was just the messing about. <laughs> um, that would get up to because obviously it's so compact and it's so um, intense that everyone's on these mad highs and lows to yeah. to keep everyone going. You know, like say like I was down, Chigs would come and give you like the most amazing hugs, and Aww. Maggie would give pep talks, and the like the morale of everyone keeping everyone yeah. going, and no one was ever. Everyone's like, oh, aren't don't you want to win? And I was like, sod winning. Like, I'm just having a great time. I just want to be here. Like me and Freya would go and uh, sit on, I had like a little weird patio and we'd go and sit there and drink uh, Marks and Spencer tinnies and (laughs) just, just have a good time. Like have a laugh. Yeah. You seem to get on really well with Noel as well. There was definitely like, um, yeah, you seem to bounce off each other. Are you still friends with him now? I think he's like, the same level as crazy to be honest i think at some point he was looking at me thinking like Where you're a step you ahead <laughs> yeah. yeah there was that bit the the ostrich yeah the ostrich where you were saying you were like oh you don't like ostrich and it's like oh why as if like there surely can't be a reason and you're like yeah what do you say like it was he were on its back and it was running around or something it, and he's like, away, what? like he never yeah. believed anything i said and i'd be like google it because that's, <laughs> that's the thing like i remember random pieces of information and then they obviously come up to you and try and engage and have these random conversations so sometimes i'd be like oh do you know someone's married to the eiffel tower and they'd be like what and i'd be like google it fact checked it because i know it's real and aim's like elsa eiffel or something is that true yeah yeah no way yeah oh oh i used to come out with loads of weird stuff and they'd just be like is she lying? Where's she from? And I'd be like, and I bet they've got to be careful life. as well, like putting it on air. Like if somebody's just coming up with all these random <laughs> lies, <laughs> they don't want to include them in case it's just like what. But yeah, that's really cool. It like it looks so much fun. It like I had such a laugh. I loved as well when when there was one episode. I think you were wearing like a matching top to Noel as well. Like oh, he was wearing one with like big smiley faces or something. Weren't you wearing one the same? He was just like that man sad. And no one, so I turned up, that was my first day outfit. Um, Noel's obviously get styled and stuff. And he turned up and he was like, we didn't know. 
and I was just like what and everyone was like why are they the same and I was just like and then I was like to um, like the behind the scenes people like you should tell me what he's gonna dress like each week and I'll just I'll just dress like him and they were just looking at me like this girl's creepy (laughs) (laughs) oh brilliant are you still friends with any of the Bake Off like people anymore are you still do you still hang out with any of them yeah yeah so we're obviously super close to Freya yeah. Um, she's actually moving in with me. Um, no way. Yeah, so she's gonna move in with me once my house is finished. Um, we went to see Chigs about two weekends ago. Um, yeah. yeah, so really close to a lot of them still. Um, always on the phone to Amanda and Maggie is like the sweetest. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, me and Freya done a road trip. Yeah, no, I did. See, I did see on Instagram that there was a few photos of you and Freya. Yeah, so yeah, we are like super, super close. It's got to the point now where um, people invite us to events and you're like, oh, do I have a plus one? They're like, oh, well, we invited you and Freya. And you're like, sad. <laughs> I brilliant. mean, it would be a very strange duo. I feel like we've got like, yeah, she's got all the vegans on side. There I yeah. am eating KFC. Like, she's only That's 20 awesome. as well. Like, she's, um, wow. she's dead. Um, is a goal orientated you know like she's yeah yeah like really determined rhythm. yeah yeah awesome well that's cool and i think the most memorable part of bake off for me and i'm sure everyone talks about this was your incredible cake that you created to like celebrate neurodiversity and all of that and i think it had such an impact on people didn't it could you tell us tell just in case somebody's not li- watched bake off could you tell us about your cake and what it was like um so it was gluten-free week um and obviously we get these weird briefs and they say stuff like um, it's got to relate back to an aspect of your life it's gluten-free and um, at that point I was like what is gluten-free like <laughs> so I took myself down to Asda and then found out that there's like gluten-free soy sauce and I was like I thought soy sauce was just salt um, <laughs> so I was trying to think like what how am I going to link this and then I was thinking well gluten-free people obviously feel different in some way yeah. to the rest of society like must feel a bit marginalized so I was like how am I different I was like I'm different because I've got a load of SEN issues so I've always been on that side or you know like taken out of classes to do something else um, so I was like I'll, I'll mix them both um, and that cake evolved so much it was brilliant um the first time I tried it at home and had letters all over it looked so messy and I was just like mm, this just isn't right and then um, in the practice tent the day before it came out horrendous because I just oh, no. I'd ran out of concentration I was absolutely done um obviously the group's getting smaller Frey had gone home George had just gone home and George used to look after me so much oh. um like because so George um works with people with special needs oh really Um, so his pod used to be next to mine so the week before i was getting quite stressed over the the tarts and george would go and get me lemonades from the bar and just be like just have a little 10 minutes and drink a lemonade you know like keep hydrated and yeah he really understood yeah so it was a big loss to lose george and i was just like this is it I'm done. This is the only cake that I wanted to do and it's going to come out terrible. Oh, no. Um, And then on the day, it it just worked. And then what what you didn't see is like um, Chigs came over and was helping me paint the the things Um, gold because everyone finished so early compared to me. It took me an hour and 40 minutes to pipe that cake. I'm not surprised. It was literally covered (laughs) in different coloured piping, wasn't it? It It looked incredible. Oh, oh um, I was amazed. And it, it when when you're there, you don't really. Um, I think everything happens so fast. You don't really take anything in. So you know when Paul and Prue come over and talk to you, you're just kind of like going like through the through the motions, yeah. thinking go away so I can finish my cake. <laughs> <laughs> I do get that feeling sometimes when you're watching the contest that they seem to come at like the most stressful part and people are just like just ah just leave me alone <laughs> yeah and I so I remember that day I they hated the fact that I used food color and everything Paul Hollywood <laughs> hates food color and, Does so, it? yeah um so I had all these bowls filled of all these different colored <laughs> waters 
and seeing them walking over and I was thinking this is the worst the worst <laughs> part that they could have walked over because he's going to instantly be like look at all that colour what's this girl doing again um, and um, they were like oh you know you've just got to concentrate and all this and Twitter went mental um, because Twitter was like how can you tell someone to concentrate yeah. after they've just said they've got ADHD yeah. and a concentration disorder um, so it it was hilarious to watch it back and then see social media yeah and see I the think, response they got yeah it, it got the most positive response out of any Bake Off post I think on no way their social I'm not medias. surprised to be honest it was incredible and the message it gave out and it wasn't it like Kira Knightley said that she like bawled when she saw it because of her yeah. own dyslexia diagnosis which that must have been like what did you have any idea that it would have such an impact on people when you were doing yeah. it did I, d- I didn't think it would at all because um, I think the thing with having SEN issues is when you get diagnosed and stuff, you feel like it's just you, don't you? Yeah. And obviously, you sometimes go to like a, like special departments and there's like five or six kids and you think like, oh, I'm just like one of a few. But like one, it's like one in seven people is neurodiverse. Um, there's so many. And I think it's just people don't openly speak about it. So the outreach was there because people don't see it on, on telly. It was spoken about and it was, I think it's a really positive thing to be neurodiverse. I don't see it as a, like any sort of disability. Like I think it's like, it's just a different way of thinking and it makes you think outside the box and you can think all these like great magical things that some people can't think. um, Yeah. And come up with ideas like that. So, I think it's a positive, so I think it was a shock for people to see it spoken about positively, to yeah. see it on a like an eight o'clock slot yeah, on definitely. a major channel. Um and I think people were just like it the outreach was like absolutely amazing. It was it was lovely. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. When you were growing up, was did you ever see anybody in the media who had like special educational needs? Was there any role models you had? Because I, looking back, I think there's been quite a big change recently in terms of the media, like portraying people positively. But I can't think back of anyone really being positively portrayed. Like when I was younger, I don't know about you. Was no, there anyone? So I remember in my dyslexic unit on the wall, it was like people who had um, SEN issues, and um, it was Whoopi Goldberg and Einstein. Yeah, so not really relatable, sort of. No, yeah. not at all. Like, you can't... And you can't imagine them having a life and how they do certain tasks. And yeah, I think that's what was really good about Bake Off as well because it's yeah. such an intense task oriented thing to see um, someone with ADHD on there. Yeah, People absolutely. are like, oh, wow. Um, oh, you can. Yeah. can focus for that long because people seem to think that we're like hyper squirrels like just <laughs> go mental like they're not going to be able to concentrate for four hours um yeah so it's i think because sometimes it can work i think like where you can sort of hyper focus in some ways can't you so like you can get really really focused it's sort of the opposite way is that more for you then are you more do you find it that um, way i think it was a bake off set and was really good because obviously there's no distractions yeah if i'm a who i'm a bit of a flitter sometimes so like yeah I'll go out, walk the dog and come back and start. But Bake Off, you're stuck there. You can't do yeah. anything else. Um, So for me, on Bake Off, what was a major thing was I limited myself to doing one task at a time. Yeah. Because I knew I'd get really overwhelmed and start not doing everything correct. Yeah. So um, that's why I used to, like, when we used to watch it back, my mum used to be like, you don't move. And I'd be stood there staring and jam for, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> And everyone else is running around, and I'm just like, do do do. <laughs> staring my jam. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. So that was the sort of coping strategy that presumably you've learned through like childhood, and yeah, and you yeah. then used it at Bake Off, so sort of giving yourself set tasks and not doing too much at once, not sort of multitasking, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Um, because that that was the thing. It was just um, finding my own way through it that yeah. I could hard did, to cope with did they put in any sort of special adjustments to help you at Bake Off, um so there was if i couldn't read anything that they were gonna one of the producers would read for me because i was yeah. dead worried about the technical challenge oh yeah of course. Um, obviously the instructions um i had 
um dyslexic dyslexic friendly font and all my writing was in a bigger size yeah. and had more spacing um so i had that put in place um which was hilarious because um when it when like you speak to a psychologist and they ask you you know like whether anything needs to be put in place and i said all that and then when yeah. i was speaking to the production staff they were like oh the year before um uh, so dave had his um technicals in a certain font and there was major on the internet because it was like in written like cabrio or something and it was like it, like it's so weird people like stop and zoom in to see what font yeah, you use. that is wow who's that bothered <laughs> <laughs> wow that's amazing <laughs> So when you were at school, what what was school like for you? Was was it a pleasant experience with special education needs, or was it was it challenging? What was it like? Um, it was definitely challenging. Um, I think because I am quite easy breezy. Um, mm-hmm. I did, I could mask a lot of things. Yeah, and some of things like I just like pretended like never had an effect on me, but yeah, obviously Deep did. Down. Yeah, and then um. So I went to a couple of different schools um, mm-hmm. and then my sixth form was like an old private school okay. and they didn't really recognise SEN as right. a thing. Um, so I went to, to that sixth form, that's when I struggled the most um, because all the girls there um, had to do tests to get in and stuff so they were all super clever Yeah, and then they had this... Um, one room at the top of the school um for sen that i'd visit and it was like being the hunchback of dr like oh, hidden God. away yeah um, it's not very inclusive <laughs> i was there for three weeks and they asked me to drop down to two a levels um yeah. because they didn't think i'd be able to achieve free um just stuff like that and obviously yeah. it, you're getting used to a new school they're asking yeah. you to do that it, it, it chips away at you yeah so then um, I turned a lot to bacon during six form and I made everyone's 18th birthday cake. No way. Um, yeah, because it was I the only way I got like positive feedback yeah. while I was there. People would be like, oh, this is amazing. Um, yeah. It was because it was an old private school. They had like um, head girls and all that. So the birthday cake I made for the head girl. I got all the head teachers to sign. Wow. Like, they were all out there, birthday cakes. I made the prom cake and um, the school symbol was forget-me-nots and I had to forget me, forget me not for every student in, in oh, sixth wow. form. But yeah, that um, makes sense that you wanted to do it. Like That would be your your way of getting some positive feedback. And, yeah, I can yeah. totally see so that. So I think like that, that's where I gathered a lot of my skills between like that age because that in that school that was the only way I was getting like really yeah. positive feedback. Yeah, no, that makes sense. When So when were you diagnosed? Was that at primary school then? Yeah, yeah. So I was first diagnosed with dyslexia while I was in primary school. Yeah. Um, had the, oh, she's just lazy. Um, oh. Back yeah. a couple of times. Um, I had a teacher that tried to explain dyslexia that was like, it. everyone's got light bulbs in the head and some of yours just don't work. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I was oh. like, okay. <laughs> oh no that is awful it's honestly At primary like, school as well was that yeah that's the sort um, of well, obviously it stuck with you I was gonna say it's the sort of thing isn't it that sticks with you and oh my goodness uh, then that is horrendous. I luckily found like a dyslexic unit outside of school um with an amazing woman called Michelle Pembleton yeah. um and I went there from eight to 22 oh, she done wow. all my uni work um everything I used to go see her between two and four times a week probably wow. my dad had to like remote just how to send me <laughs> yeah um it was amazing she like helped me so much so um, is that like private tuition then sort of after school yeah was private you? tuition tailored towards sen children Brilliant. um so while i was there i met other sen um kids yeah. because i don't think there was actually there was only me in my primary school yeah. at that time um so it was amazing to like meet kids, uh, be able to learn off them as well. Yeah. Um, and just <laughs> feel like you weren't the only one struggling. Yeah. 
Absolutely. That must have made a huge difference just to know you're not alone and not the only one. It yeah, sounds like I think you've got a really, really supportive family as well, the fact that they've, they've paid for you to do all of that after school. and Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's where I got like so much confidence about yeah. and surrounding SEM because that's where I learned it was a positive thing. So I think that bubbled me quite a lot during secondary school because yeah. during secondary school I was told like uh, uh, by the French teacher I wasn't allowed to French GCSE because I couldn't speak English. So what? there was no point me learning French. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so oh, it's these comments as well. Like it's really the teacher probably doesn't even remember saying it, but you will remember that forever. Do you know what I mean? It's it's like the light bulb comment. It's it, they stick with you, don't they? Harsh comments yeah. like that. It's not okay. Oh. It is it is mental. And then the I done a drama GCSE and, and instead they were like, Oh, because you're not doing French, you do drama now. And I was just like Um It I think it is crazy, but I do feel like it's changed so much. Yeah. Because I think it's it, um, it's constantly evolving. Like, when I was in school, neurodiversity was, definitely wasn't a word. I no. don't think, like, I'd I never heard, heard it. I never heard it, no. Um, so I do think it's constantly changing. I think there's different tiers of things across the world. I've done a couple of podcasts with uh, Americans, and they call it uh, ASD. Yeah, and they call it like, ADHD, uh, like ADD, don't they, or something? Yeah. Right as well, yeah. Um, so... I just think it's it's all it's a it's a learning process for everyone. And I just don't think schools and teachers were as clued up. Yeah, back then. Yeah, I'm caught up now. So, what would your advice be for teachers? Because there'll be lots of teachers listening to this, and like senkos and like head teachers. What would your advice be for like strategies or helping children like yourself when you were a child um, with like dyslexia and dyspraxia and ADHD? What would you wish they'd have done more of? Um, I wish that there probably would have been like more informal conversations about like the help i needed yeah um stuff like that um asking whether you're actually comfortable you know for Mm -hmm. like a special needs assistant to follow you around yeah because sometimes that is it's helpful it's not what you want no especially when you're in secondary when you're a teenager it's yeah yeah it makes it sometimes makes you stand out a bit more people are like why have you got that? Are you stupid? And you're like, oh. Um, yeah. At one point, I wore the glasses, the, you know, to stop the words. So they were yeah. dark so green color- lenses. The coloured lens um, in them. And then I had pink Versace frames because obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we don't need anything else to help help us stand out. We stand yeah. out enough. Oh, um, <laughs> sometimes we want to blend in and maybe that's, there should be pre-conversations like do you want support before you come into class so while you're in class you know what's going on already yeah you can keep up or support afterwards so the room's not constantly stopping so you you can keep up yeah no that yeah just helping you sort of blend in more and having those like informal chats beforehand and asking do you want your teaching assistant to be with you all the time or do you want them just to check in with you every so often and look like they're supporting the whole class and not just you I suppose yeah. it'd be helpful and then just yeah do you want us to go through what we're going to be covering before the lesson yeah it's sort of bringing in the child into the conversations isn't it that the adults are having and sort of yeah making them have a bit more control over it that's, really that's it advice. a lot of people make uh, decisions about your education without you being yeah involved and they limit you to what they think you could achieve about asking yeah. you sometimes yeah that's a really good point I think that's yeah it's like having the child in mind actually thinking about the child isn't it and and getting their opinion included because it's it's their education yeah that's a really good point is. I like that the, I, I visited an amazing um Nora Drive Air School the other day in um Heighton oh, I forgot the name now begins with an A it was totally catered towards Nora's wise diverse children it was Brilliant. they had sensory rooms chill out zones small classes it was wow. like I went there and I was just like wow this is amazing because the I got invited there because my old form tutor from school had moved there and oh, he was cool. like um he was like yeah like for like l- the first couple of years of school I didn't even know you had like all these issues he yeah. was like you just used to mask it really well and I was like yeah like yeah 
and that that's the thing like you're struggling so much but you're trying to be so normal sometimes so. yeah that then it makes it harder because no one notices and yeah and then they don't get the yeah. help you need but you don't want the help it's it's a minefield isn't it so is that something you're doing now then are you going to schools and and yeah so yeah. I, I try and visit as many like local schools as I can because uh, I'm still working full time mm-hmm. um so um every other Friday I have a day off and visit to the school this Friday um because I just think it's nice yeah it's, it's nice I find it dead positive I think it's quite positive for the kids to do something fun yeah, in yeah, school definitely. as well um and then I go to a place called Strawberry Fields a lot which yeah. is a a scheme set up by the Salvation Army to help people with neurodiversity that can't um, or have struggled to get jobs between 19 and 25. It's like oh, a yeah. year scheme that yeah. um, provides some skills to get jobs. That's fantastic. It's an amazing place. Um, so they do like six weeks training in class and then they, in Strawberry Fields itself, they've got a cafe, a visitor's experience and stuff. Yeah. Where they, they then put them out for training for eight weeks and then they find them training for 12 weeks in cafes and places around the local community. That's brilliant. So you can sort of have a go at, at the job sort of in a more safe area with, in, within this sort of this setting. And then yeah. you, when you build your skills up, you can then go off and hopefully, yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. amazing because um, they have a lot of uh, autistic students mm-hmm. there. Um, and at the end of the six weeks, they do a presentation and they've got to give a four minute speech. And wow. I've, there's like a four minute speech for anyone is a lot. Yeah, but a four minute speech for people who struggle with eye contact and stuff like that, standing up in front of people like that's asking them like for the world and every yeah. one of them got up and done it wow. and it was absolutely amazing and then the best part was they got me up at the end to give everyone certificates and I couldn't read anyone's name and I was like oh <laughs> that's that's good though isn't it because it's showing that you know what I mean it's 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 good it's showing you're a role model you're showing people that you find things difficult as well and you you're the same do you know what I mean it's yeah yeah it's um, like... because I just yeah I yeah, it was it was hilarious, but I I love that place. I love it so much. Um, yeah. And then when I go into schools, I just like um, ice cupcakes. Teach different ice and methods. Um, oh, cool! Yeah, which is also um, amazing to see like how everyone deals with the different textures of food because food is yeah. like a whole thing as well yeah, when you're exactly. neurodiverse. Yeah, it's um, like the sensory can, aspect as well of it. Yeah, yeah. Who can touch egg whites? Who can't? Like. Yeah. Um, the noises, the mixes, everything. Um, Is that prudence we can hear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was him running Hello. down barking. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. So, so what, what's your future then, Lizzie? What do you want to do? What's your aim? Oh, you're not sure? Um, <laughs> I, that's it. I'm just not sure. Um, at the minute, I'd love to write a cookbook for um, ah. diverse, like people. Yeah, that'd be um, awesome. Just because I find cookbooks a bit hard. Yeah. A lot of them are on white paper. Um, yeah. If they haven't got a photo, I'm not making it. Yeah, um, that's such a good point. So, like, having visuals, having, like, bigger text, bigger spacing, nice font, that sort of stuff, and background colour. Yeah. yeah you could, that'd and be just, brilliant. like, different methods as well. Because um, I think we've all got to remember that bacon is just a bit of fun, to be yeah. honest. And all these rules and gatekeeping things, like, just shouldn't be a thing, like... Yeah. Some people struggle like um with like like I do coordination and stuff. So lining a cake tin is a nightmare. Oh, of course, yeah. There's so much more easier ways. Like you can instead of lining it with strips and making sure everything's the size, and you can just get a massive piece of baking paper, stick it under some water so it's damp, crumple it, dry it out a bit, and fit it perfect. It just takes no way. Time. I'm gonna steal that myself when I next bake a cake. Yeah. That's a brilliant suggestion. Yeah, you need to get these in a book. That would be, yeah, it's like tips like that that are so useful, aren't they? Yeah, there's ways around stuff that we don't, we don't need to stick to the norms because why? Yeah, if it doesn't work for everybody, don't do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I just don't think, don't think it's a thing that's actually being thought about. I think bacon is something that's really gatekeeped and (laughs) it's really like, no, you make a cake this way and this is why you do it. And at the end of the day, it's not fun. You just want to get in there, don't you? Yeah. Colour some icing and go a bit crazy. <laughs> like, 
Oh, that's brilliant. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, you do. And it, it is, you're right. When you look at the like baking instructions, the recipes, they're always like, you need to put your oven on first. You need to do this. Then you, whilst this is happening, you need to do this. And that can be really tra- challenging, I imagine, if you've got to be multitasking, thinking, right, I've done that. And then I've got to do this at the same time. And yeah. Yeah. And even like, you know, like when it says chill for two hours, as a kid, I really struggle to how am I going to dive here for this task for two hours and then come back to it? Yeah. So there should be suggestions like in two hours, you could watch a film, you could yeah. walk your dog, come back. Like that's that's a two hour gap. Like there needs to be stuff that's like, okay, so that that is what two hours looks like. So I can. Yeah, because a lot of, yeah, it's like a presumed knowledge for kids, isn't it? But kids don't understand time. Like time's really a really challenging aspect for a lot of children, isn't it? Like two hours, yeah. my kids will say to me, like, how long's that? And I'm like, it's the length of a so-and-so episode on the TV or something. Because it's really hard to imagine how long something's going to be. So yeah, that's a yeah, really good really, suggestion. It's it's really hard to, I definitely feel like it's it's something that should be there. It should be on the market, like one in seven mm-hmm. people. Why, yeah. why are we being ignored? Absolutely. Like, Oh, I do that. That sounds brilliant. Yes. So, yeah. So that's your future. Then hopefully, hopefully, write this book. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. and then just just do more nice charity stuff. That's where. Yeah. That's what makes me happy. Like going to schools. So the last school I went into, they were like, "Why? Why don't you train to be a teacher?" I was like, "Oh, I do not want all that. All that work. Thanks." <laughs> I'm happy coming in, messing up a classroom, and then going in. <laughs> Spreading a bit of icing around, <laughs> yeah. having a chat to the kids, and then leaving it all to you. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. It is. How can people find you on social media then? What, what are links can you give us? Like, um, where... So, Lizzie underscore on Instagram and Lizzie Acker Bakes on TikTok. Um, TikTok's a bit more fun. That's yeah. I'm not on TikTok. Not we lot. are as uh, we do. Emily, who works on our like Twinkle SEND team, is brilliant, and she's on TikTok. But I'm not. I'm not on there yet. So you'd recommend TikTok then? Oh, it's it's so much more fun. Um, and not every video has to be serious. Like some yeah. videos, me and Freya just dance. <laughs> brilliant. It's just sort of fun to do. Um, but yeah, and then every week on Instagram, me and Freya do something we haven't done. That's our challenge this year. Um, and oh, we've got up to loads of weird stuff so far. And what have I you think, done? Um, so we've been and played squash. Oh god, um, squash <laughs> <is> hard. Been, <laughs> yeah, we went to Oxford and rode with the Harford Oxford team. <laughs> um, rode rode a tandem. Um, yeah, we've went when we went to Leicester with Chigs a couple of weeks ago. We went um like rock climbing up walls oh wow um just to like try and get out then because we've all been locked away for two years yeah. i think we've, we've missed. missed a lot yeah and i think we should start doing more random stuff yeah sounds fun yeah just living enjoying it yeah <laughs> just trying things so we'd go and try random things and do stuff together and then put it on instagram every week <laughs> <laughs> brilliant i'm gonna have a look after this <laughs> And if anyone wants to follow your wonderful dog as well, how can they find Prudence on Instagram? Oh, Prudence the Betty on Instagram. <laughs> I need to start posting more stuff. She d- yeah, she gets up to some funny things. Uh, we do Aww. every Christmas. We normally do a photo shoot. Um, <laughs> because I'm do you sad. Dress her up? we make Christmas cards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one year we controvent- controversially went as a um, baby Jesus and Mary. Oh. <laughs> How did that it, it, go down? Did it go down all right? Or? Well, all, all my all my friends are quite religious, like really found it hilarious. And I was like, this is sound then. It? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Test it out of them first. Brilliant. <laughs> this is all right. Um, but yeah, so we, we do some nice stuff and go to dog friendly places. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. Oh, you've been such an amazing guest. I've been so excited. I feel like I've just chilled, just about chilled out from my excitement of seeing you at the start. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. How brilliant was she? So excited that I was able to chat to Lizzie. And yeah, really, really useful episode. Lots of tips about um, supporting children with special education needs in schools and the strategies she uses and her experience, as well as a bit about Bake Off. Anyway, (laughs) thanks for listening to Sending the Experts with me, Georgina Durrant. And see you next time.